Hi, Theo here from ElectroEffects.com on behalf of Ovo.cz. In this video we will take a look at how to install and use the professional range bar charting software by Ovo. If you'd like to follow along and get a free trial then just hit pause and head over to Ovo.cz where you can quickly download a copy. And while you're there you should also grab the free Omnia Remote and Omnia Auto Range indicators because I'm going to show you how they work also. Both the trial and full versions of this range bar charting software are the exact same file so once your trial period expires you will simply enter a license key and keep on using it. There will be no further download. The free trial period is 15 days and then every 90 days you'll get another 15 day trial just in case you're revisiting the range bars after some time away from them. If you've already purchased a license key then get that email handy because I will quickly show you activation. And it's also worth mentioning at this stage that a license for this software is included with a VIP membership at electroeffects.com. Now with the software downloaded and your MetaTrader platform open, we can install the software. What you need to do is go to File, Open Data Folder, and it will open the location that this instance of MetaTrader is storing its files. The location itself will be different for everyone and it won't look like that, but don't worry, just go to File, Open Data Folder and you're in the right place. Go into your MQL4 folder and then your Indicators folder and this is where the software needs to be pasted. I have already done that, but you can go ahead and paste that in there. Once you've done that, just close that window, go to the Navigator and in this Indicators tree, you just right click and hit Refresh and then the range bar indicators, the Omnia remote and the Omnia auto range will now show up. Before we proceed any further go to tools options and in the expert advisors tab just make sure that you check allow DLL imports and this is just saving you doing it on a case by case basis. This is a global setting. Then go to your charts tab and the max bars in chart for a default MetaTrader install are quite low so you're probably going to want to increase those. I like to use 380,000 bars uh, because basically 380,000 M1 bars which is the smallest time frame I'd be looking at that's over one year of data and that's plenty for me. Just my opinion though and you can increase that number as you see fit. Once done with that click OK and you'll notice that if you hover your mouse over these indicators it, just for a second and stop it's going to tell you the version number so that's one way of doing that. The next step will be to open up a chart, file, new chart, I'm going to open up a euro dollar. Uh, by default we open up on the H1 and most offline chart generators will require you to use the M1 but this software is not like that and you can actually run it on any time frame that you choose, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use M1 out of habit and the first thing that we'll do is just grab the range bar indicator and either double click it or drag it onto the chart. The first setting is your the, the actual range of the bar and that's in points not in pips so it's set to 100 but that actually means 10 pips, that's 10.0 pips, 100 points. The output uh, time frame, you could leave it blank and it would choose one for you. But if you want to specify, we might say we would like this to be an M10. If I just enter the number 10 in there, it will become an M10 chart. If I want it to be an H or a D10, for whatever reason, I would have to apply the H or D prefix. But if I leave no prefix and I just put the 10, it will default to using the M prefix right there. The number of offline candles is set to 1000 and that will basically fill up any high definition monitor these days. But if you want more history on your chart you will need to increase that number. And the session control you can either keep the chart continuous or break it into sessions and we'll take a look at that in a moment. I like to keep my charts continuous but that's just my preference. Paste your activation code here is self explanatory and if you don't have a license key then you don't need to worry about that. If you leave it blank you'll just be starting your 15 day trial. If you do have a license key however you will have received an email like this and there will be a license key in the middle. It won't be XXXXX but uh, it will be a real license key. Just copy it, come over here and paste it in there. 
Now you only have to do this one time and the software will be licensed to your machine. You won't have to do this again, so it is a one-time deal. The final variable, the author has instructed me, is not really very important for anyone, so I think it's more for him. Don't worry about that one. And I'm just going to remove that because obviously we're not using it. So the only other things to mention would be in the common tab, if you hadn't done the step previously in tools, options, expert advisors and check that allow DLL imports, you would have to do it manually right here or the software will not function. And then the about tab is another place where you can check what version number you're on. And there's also some further information there. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this indicator now starts running. I have not licensed it to this machine. So you can see free evaluation and then it tells you what date that free evaluation expires. The X button simply removes this indicator from the chart. The M10 button, as you can see, we chose M10. If I click that, it will launch the chart, but I won't do that just now. The variable of 100 points is 10 pips, like I said, and if we want to change it, we can actually change it directly from here. I could change it to a 200. And as soon as I hit enter, that chart is now updated to be a, a 20 pip range bar chart. So I'll put that back to 100 and I'll hit enter. And the final thing to mention is the system message. Once you register your software and enter the license key, it will say registered to your email. And if there are any updates available, the system message will let you know that you should go over to ovo.cz and get the new latest version. In order to update the software, you would go to File, Open Data Folder, MQL4, Indicators. And because we actually have this software running, I'm going to close down MetaTrader. And then I would copy the new files, come here and hit paste, and then just overwrite, copy and replace all of them, and you would have updated software. Then you could start your MetaTrader back up again. Okay, with MetaTrader now running once more, the final thing to talk about before we launch this offline chart is the fact that you can run as many versions of the, these generators as you like. Right now we have a range bar running and I'm also going to set up a range bar without gaps. Uh, we'll explain the difference there as we proceed. I'll just put the exact same settings only I'll put it on an M11 instead and I'll click OK. So now you can see we have one range bar running, one range bar without gap and if I click this M10 button it will just launch the chart and I'll put it on the top half so we can take a look at both. And uh, I'm going to load a simple template. Uh, an interesting point here is that if you have a template that you like, if you name it offline, then whenever you create these charts and launch them, the offline template will be applied automatically for you. So we have the M10. I'm going to now open the M11 like so. and we'll load that same simple template and now we put them side by side. Now the most technical version of a range bar has a one tick gap between the open and close of each bar and the range bar without gap just tries to keep things a little smoother. When it comes to the Forex market trading currencies the level of volatility is quite high and it's going to be very hard to actually see a difference. When the market's moving really fast and one tick is actually a a decent distance and it, it might start to look a little different but the choice is really yours which one you need as you can see very very little, little difference uh, I'm just going to keep the standard range bar for the rest of this video I'll close the M11 and we can then remove the M11 generator from the chart with the X like so and I'll make this full screen so we have our 10 pip range bar chart right here and there are two pieces of uh, add-on software. One is the Omnia remote. I'm going to drag that onto the chart. There's a clock display on or off, just a yes or no on that one. And there's mark unreliable chart parts, yes or no. So I'll leave them both checked and click OK. As you can see over here, the background has got these gray areas and that just lets us know there's an unreliable chart part in here and the clock is over at this side. Now I'll explain the unreliable chart parts as I go, but if you don't want the gray areas marked out once you've understood it, 
you can actually just switch them off. Same applies to the clock, uh, just on or off. Okay, so once again, a red X if you want to remove it. The session button right here, which we'll talk about shortly. And then a feed button, which allows us to go back to the feed chart. And then the M10 button takes us back here. Now clearly you can do that with the MetaTrader tabs. But if you had uh, a lot of charts open, it might be easier to navigate using the buttons. Being able to change this on the fly is also available here. And we can switch to a 20 pip range bar chart just by doing that. 200 points, remember, is 20 pips. And if I want to switch back to 100, I can do so like that. Okay, so just changing it on the fly. The MetaTrader charts by default in their properties have a show period separators. And if I switch that on, it'll help me explain this session toggle. When I switch that on, if we roll back, you'll see a separator every now and then. This is basically the start of each day. Um, if the chart was much, much longer term, you'd probably have the start of each week instead. But because this is short term, we've got the start of each day as our separator. And if I switch the toggle on, it's basically just going to now start the range bar chart again at each session open. So if I switch that on, you can see it's very fractionally different. But all that's happening is that the, you know, the beginning of the chart at this point in time is for this day right there and then it just resets itself and starts again. Now I don't find this makes a huge difference uh, when it comes to these range bar charts, but you can certainly play around a little bit, have a look at that. The unreliable chart parts that we were looking at, uh, is all that means is that because we were not running these charts in real time, the market data provided on the standard timeframes of MetaTrader was not sufficient enough to be 100% accurate, it's just letting you know. If you're running these charts in real time, the incoming tick data is being used and the charts will always be 100% accurate. But if your MetaTrader is shut down for a period of time and you reload it, you're going to use whatever history you get given on the standard timeframes. And if your range bars are quite small and there was a, a huge movement in one M1 candle, in one one minute candle, then the data will not be 100% accurate. And that's just what the Mark Unreliable Chart Parts would tell you. Now, since you're trading into the, you know, to the right, into the future, it shouldn't really affect you too much. But uh, that is the function of it anyway. The other item that is available to use is the Omnia Auto Range. And if I drag that on, this is just a piece of software to help you calculate the best size range bar for you to use on each given pair. Some people might like to use the same size range bar on all pairs, but in many respects, this is not very logical because each pair has different volatility. There's there's different amount of pip movements going on. So if you'd like to have a way to quantify what it is you're looking at, make it fit your trading style and the speed of trading that you like to do, you can use this indicator. And the best way to explain it is to start with the minutes for calculation. If you think about a month of trading, you generally got four weeks in a month, five days a week, 20 days uh, of minutes ends up being 28,800. So we know that we've got one month used for calculations. I want the software to check once a day that those calculations are not changing. Perhaps the pair is getting more volatile or less volatile and you want to adapt with it organically. And then what is it that we want to try and emulate with our bars? And if I were to put 30 in here, what we are saying right now is that in 28,800 minutes, one month, how, what is the average movement every 30 minutes in pips? You know, what is the average pip movement? That's giving us our range for our range bar. You can multiply that by one, two or 0 0.5, whatever you want. And then I ask it to refresh once a day, check the calculations, make sure things aren't changing. So if I click OK, you'll notice that the software is marked out 12.2 pips. So the average 30 minute movement on this pair for the last month is 12.2 pips. And now these bars are 12.2 pips each. So you can play around a little bit with that. Uh, there's certainly a lot of options there and if you have any further questions about the software just 
post them in the comments section below this video and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can.